there are lots of traps <laughs> in the neutral field and what you can see in the world there are traps so let us see the evolutionary and pathological implications so we are looking forward um, professor munjuna joshi for your scintillating talk in the next few minutes thank you so much uh, thank you sir for the kind of introduction uh, I thank Dr. Introduction, just a moment. Introduction that uh, Dr. Manjunath Joshi completed his doctoral and postdoctoral studies from the Tassel University, Switzerland, and presently working as a professor in Monipal Academy. Higher education, research team of the Dr. Joshi aims to understand cellular and signaling mechanisms and interface of inflammations and metabolism in neutrophils in the context of type 2 diabetes. This is very interesting and its complication. The team examines how alternations on the immunometabolic axis influences formation of neutrophil extracellular traps and contribute to type 2 T2DM, associated recurrent infection and vascular disease. Other research interests lie involving in understanding crosstalk between the inflammation IL-6, interleukin and epigenetic mechanism, DNA methylation in regulating pathogenesis and urogenesis in type 2 diabetes and breast tumors. The lab also uh, set up a mass spectrometry facilities for the metabolic, metabolomics analysis. So this is a this is all about, not all about, because it's going on. Thank you so much for waiting for your introduction, and please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the introduction. I thank uh, Dr. Ganeshwar and Dr. Chandana for inviting us here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I would like to tell you that we have been listening to two different lineages, ASI and ANI, and then we have yet another lineage here, Dr. Sangaraj lineage. So probably we are here around 20, 25 people who are associated with us. So thanks, uh, Ganeshwar, for bringing all of us here and then uh, making this. Um, I'm a bit nervous because um, this is completely different story what I'm going to talk about in the next 20 minutes. Uh, from, from others, I, I, I try to uh, convinced that these are important in complex disorders like type 2 diabetes. Uh, so we, we work with the uh, of the nectar center tracks uh, and I am going to talk about evolutionary and the pathological implication. Uh, I have forcibly put this word evolutionary because this conference is all about evolution and we don't do anything about evolution but few slides about how, how we have evolution. Uh, these, these nets are evolved. So uh, these are neutrophils, uh, what we call them spider man of body. Uh, these are uh, yeah, innate immune cells which are uh, abundantly present in the, in, in the blood. Uh, most of the WBC uh, components uh, are, are, the, are neutrophils. Uh, they work in three different uh, ways. Uh, one is they do phagocytosis, uh, they end up bacteria and then degranulation. Uh, they have the granules, granules in their the cells, so they will release the uh, um, uh, uh, anti-pathogen uh, molecules, peptides, and also ROS and ROS, and then they kill the bacteria. And the third one is uh, to make nets, that is what we are, I, I'm going to talk about. Uh, so what are these nets? When the uh, neutrophils are stimulated with bacteria, they expel their DNA outside along with the uh, histones and also granular proteins, and then they trap the bacteria and then they kill them. Not only bacteria, they kill many other uh, fungi, uh, pathogens, and all of those. Uh, the theory is that uh, if the bacteria are or the pathogens are smaller than neutrophils, they do phagocytosis. If they are bigger than neutrophils, what they do? Many neutrophils touch together, they expel their DNA outside and then they kill them. So this is exactly what happens how a fisherman throws the web and then catches the fishes. Similarly, these uh, neutrophil extracellular traps are made in our body. So these are very small cells. And in the process of what we call is uh, netosis. Like apoptosis, we call the as netosis. So apart from bacteria, there are many things which can induce nets. Uh, we have shown platelets, induce nets, IL-6, homocysteine can induce nets, autoantibodies can induce nets. And then um, this is how the process takes place. And then uh, it, it actually happens, uh, starts from half an hour uh, after stimulation and then ends up in uh, 2.5 to 3 hours, uh, the whole nets are formed. These nets were discovered earlier uh, in 2004 by Brinkman et al., uh, which was published in Science. So they have shown uh, beautifully these uh, uh, electron microscopic pictures of uh, uh, trapping the bacteria, the Shigella, uh, Tablocosa aureus, and then IP. And then this is our picture to show that uh, LPS can also induce next, which we published in later. So this is a video which we have made, uh, a time lapse video uh, uh, treated with uh, neutrophils, human neutrophils treated with LPS, and then we stayed with cytoxidine, it's a DNA binding dye, 
it, it is a, a it is not permeable to light cells. So whenever the DNA is extruded outside, the, it, it uh, sends uh, uh, DNA fibers there. So we can see slowly DNA fibers coming out, and then they uh, yeah they make the nets, and then they can trap the bacteria. So uh, this is this is how these nets are made. So you can see that uh, these uh, neutrophils are migrating towards the uh, uh, right hand side and then uh, upwards. Uh, why is that? Just think over it. Uh, we'll come back to this slide later. Okay. So uh, this is a review article which was published uh, in 2018, who showed uh, the uh, summary of nets which can make uh, uh, which, which are induced with several uh, inducers, and then and everything ends upon AKT Earth pathway. Uh, our dear speaker has also said, and then uh, that leads to uh, chromatin unwinding by bad pore mediated citrullation of uh, histones and then they uh, expand their DNA outside and then they trap. This is how the mechanism goes. So uh, initially we uh, people thought that it is only relevant in infections but later people uh, realized that these nets are attributed in several diseases, non-infectious diseases like Alzheimer's, psoriasis, uh, COPD, pancreatitis and then many other diseases but we work uh, in the area of diabetes. How these nets may differences in diabetes and then related complications of the So as I said, evolution, uh, these are, uh, we call them as extracellular traps because these uh, organisms do not have neutrophils, they are single cell uh, protozoans. These also have been shown to induce nets. And then uh, these are lower invertebrates <coughs> like sea crabs, shrimps, earthworms, they also can make nets. So it's an evolutionary conserved mechanism how uh, these, uh, uh, these, these are made. So this is again in lower coordinate in the fishes, in the chicken, in the birds, in the avian uh, families they are made and then in the plants they call them as the root uh, extras and the traps because they are the uh, uh, root cells make this uh, usually in the plants and then these are in higher organisms, canine rats, uh, rodents, pigs and then later in the humans. So our interest is in diabetes as I said, why? Because diabetes is associated with always the chronic inflammation. So when a pre-diabetic individual manifests into diabetes, it is always seen that chronic inflammation is there all the time. Either we have the pain or either we have the recurrent infection uh, during that time and then later we overt into diabetes. So earlier people showed that giving the aspirin uh, lowered the sugar levels in the diabetic patient. So again, an evidence to say that inflammation is the one of the one of the very much associated associated with the uh, diabetes over there. So uh, we study two things here. One is nets, diabetes, and the different infections, and another one is nets, uh, uh, diabetes, and the vascular complications. These are the two systems what we study here. Uh, this is again saying in this, uh, the neutrophil functions are lost in case of diabetes, and then we study more into mechanisms, uh, diseases, and all. So this is our working hypothesis. Since metabolic and inflammatory pathways are interdependent, uh, both systems are deregulated in diabetes. Uh, diabetes is associated over responsiveness of innate immune cells. So what happens to necrosis in the microenvironment of the diabetes? So this is what uh, we are going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to tell about in the next few minutes. Sorry. So uh, the, the project was started with uh, uh, this ABC project, Apurva, uh, very long back when I came back to India in 2011. And then uh, we did a very simple essay to start with. Uh, this is, um, uh, we took healthy individuals, neutrophils, and then cultured in uh, high glucose for three hours. And then we challenge them with LPS, PM, and then DNA plasma. So wherever we have high glucose, there is a down regulation of necrosis is happening. Then we recruited patients, and then we isolated neutrophils from the diabetic individuals, and then uh, uh, control uh, healthy individuals, and then see LPS can make very good uh, uh, nets in case of healthy individuals, but in case of uh, uh, diabetes, uh, it is the response is impeded. They don't make nets in case of diabetic neutrophils cannot make nets. But interestingly. Um, when I say interestingly, my, my supervisor gave me a, a tip to say that if you have to attract people, you have to say interestingly, that people will say. <laughs> so, okay, now everyone is laughing, so means you are, you are with me. Uh, fine. So, we see that uh, we have quantitative netosis in the diabetes. Irrespective of LPS, they always have uh, netosis. So, which means we, we call them usually as quantitatively activated neutrophils, which make uh, the nets all the time. And when they have the infection, they do not respond to the infections, and then they that would, uh, they would uh, have more uh, co uh, morbid conditions over there. So these nets which are made from high glucose are very weak, and also in the patient also we show where they are very weaker nets compared to uh, LPS treated. So we ask whether high glucose itself will make yes, uh, nets. Yes, the answer is yes, but they make very weaker nets. As you see, compared uh, LPS, PMA, and then calcium, and of course. We see that glucose is a weaker, weaker, uh, weaker uh, 
the next meeting thing, uh, next meeting inducer. Uh, and then uh, we see the mechanisms, it is a radicate oxidase mediated mechanism, they need a, a ROS level over there. So when we when we deplete NADPH oxidase uh, by, by inhibitor GPI, diphenylene iodidium, then the glucose induced nets are coming down. So which means it needs reactive oxygen species derived from NADPH oxidase. So that's why uh, that, is, that is important. And then we saw other markers for uh, uh, nets that is due to the elastase, uh, um, the ROS, uh, cellular ROS, but not mitochondrial ROS, and then later situation of histones are also elevated in case of the uh, uh, high glucose induced nets. Then we looked at um, whether it is a glucose toxicity or whether glucose does everything inside and then <coughs> the next, uh, we used uh, uh, hexokinase inhibitor, glycolysis inhibitor, 2DG, uh, to uh, deoxy glucose, and then we, we showed that uh, when we have high glucose, uh, nets are down regulated when we have uh, 2DG, but later uh, they get again come back in, in presence of 2DG. So, which means that uh, glucose is going inside the neutrophils and then it is making something, it is not inducing just a, a, a cell death over there. So it is pre-programming something in the in the cells. So further we looked at, uh, we cultured with the bacteria and then we see that uh, when we have uh, uh, di uh, normal neutrophils from there, the survival of the bacteria is less because their nets are working here. And then when we have DNAs to dismantle nets, even the normal neutrophils will also, uh, will, will won't be able to do anything and then that's why the bacteria will grow here. But in case of diabetes, uh, uh, unfortunately that the diabetic neutrophils cannot uh, uh, cannot make nets, and then if they make nets, they are very weaker nets, so they, they cannot kill the bacteria. And then uh, if we have DNA, something will happen. Later, we uh, found that uh, diabetic plasma also has more components of nets, that is, high glucose, uh, sorry, cell free DNA, and then uh, neutrophil elastase, which was correlated with the uh, past glucose and post package glucose. So, to understand what is going on in the metabolism with the neutrophils, we isolated neutrophils from uh, uh, normal individuals and also diabetic individuals. We do two types of metabolomics analysis here. So, first thing is we considered uh, high, uh, high glucose for uh, 30 minutes, uh, uh, 3 hours, I think, and then we uh, did the metabolomics analysis. And then another setup, what we did, we did uh, uh, take neutrophils from the diabetic individuals itself and then make the metabolomics analysis. In both the conditions, we see something known as anhydrosorbital, the sorbital accumulation is there in the neutrophils, um, which we also replicated in the patient. So even in the diabetic patient, we don't culture them in neutrophils because they are uh, the high glucose because they are already uh, primed in the high glucose environment. So we take neutrophils and then we did a metabolomics analysis, we see there is a higher amount of uh, anhydrosorbital. Interestingly, what we also see is there is a down regulation of histidine lysine, pyridoxic acid. Histidine lysine is an intermediate of uh, glutamine, uh, sorry, glutathione, uh, and then some of the antioxidants are also down regulated. But on the other hand, the next making uh, components and then uh, the uh, and the anhydrosorbital and the sphingolipids and all uh, inflammatory pro, uh, lipids and all they are all upregulated and this is correlates with all of this uh, glucose levels in the in, in the in the body. So now, what what is what 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 do we understand with this? Uh, I said you that uh, glucose uh, glucose induces less by NADPH oxidase. So NADPH is a cofactor for uh, for for making the net. So oxygen species which are derived are for NADPH. Now, in what happens in the in, in the cell is that NADPH is used. Uh, how the NADPH is made? It is made by PPP, and then later this NADPH is going to uh, make the nucleotide for the DNA synthesis. Now, this NADPH has a competition. The cells will compete for NADPH in three processes. One is when there is high glucose level, it makes sorbitol accumulation. That happens via aldose reductase, uh, which needs NADPH, and then nets also needs NADPH. So, what we think is the most of the NADPH is used by aldose reductase, leaving uh, insufficiency of NADPH for netosis. So, this led us to uh, do some more experiments, and then we first uh, inhibited aldose reductase. And then see that nets are down regulated, glucose induced nets are down regulated, and also they come back. The radius that will come uh, will help to improve the functions of the neutrophils. And then later, if we supplement the NADPH, again the neutrophils will make more nets. So, insufficiency of the neutrophils, if we have, then if we supply more NADPH, then uh, they, they will come back uh, to the law. So, so, restore the functions of the neutrophils. So, this is the scheme what we have. So, we have normal glucose and high glucose. Here we have NADPH. Uh, which is made by uh, PPP, and then uh, and, and then there is a sorbitol accumulation due to there is more increase in NADPH, and then uh, this is insufficient, so that's why they make weaker nets. 
compared to normal uh, individual switch metrics on the network. Then. So we thought of uh, uh, understanding more mechanisms and more uh, into uh, making models, mouse models. We did hi-fi type models, and then we studied that. Uh, we we tried to understand what happens to the net in these uh, mouse models, and then see that uh, type two D models have more netosis. And then when we have uh, we, we induce sepsis to uh, to mimic the infections by uh, fecal ligation method, and then we show that the sepsis models have uh, lower amount of the nets. They don't respond as they respond for the uh, sepsis uh, only about the healthy condition. So we show that uh, they, they don't even in the mouse models we show that it, it is there. Now unlike T cells and B cells and monocytes, macrophages they have subsets, but <coughs> neutrophil subsets are not known. The functional uh, consequences and the, sub, the functional subsets are not known. So whether there is an heterogeneity, so the neutrophil will ask, well, what do I do now if there is an infection? Whether I need to do a phagocytosis, whether I need to do netosis, or whether I need to do degranulation. So whether which are the subsets which are only confined to uh, uh, to these things? Yes, we see that um, uh, very nicely in the normal mouse models. We see that in both in peripheral blood and bone marrow, we see more uh, around 14 to 15 percent of the neutrophils can make nets. And then 30-40% uh, of the cells can make phagocytosis, and then 20% can make it. But this proportion do not stay same in when we have diabetes and then when we have infection later. So it comes completely day and night. So you have netosis is more, and then later phagocytosis is less. So it is compromised. But in case of when we have an uh, in healthy individual who have infection, netosis is upregulated. But on the other hand, they will have both phagocytosis and netosis also upregulated. So these are lazy neutrophils. We do not do anything here. But in case of uh, diabetes, they don't do anything. But in case of sepsis, these lazy uh, neutrophils will get activated, and then there is a down regulation of uh, these inactive neutrophils. But this doesn't happen in the diabetes. So these neutrophils, which are sitting here idly, when they have infection, they get activated in the uh, in, in in the di in, in the sepsis in the in, in any infection. But this doesn't have happen in case of diabetes. So. Now we have um, uh, extracted, uh, we have isolated next making neutrophils and non making neutrophils from both uh, uh, new, uh, diabetes and then uh, and, and the normal and then had the RNAC analysis. Uh, we are waiting for the results. Uh, uh, this is the part of uh, uh, infection, what happens if a diabetic individual have infection. So now we are going to the second part of the uh, of my talk that is vascular disorders. So uh, type 2 diabetes, people have always predisposed to vascular diseases like atherosclerosis, uh, stroke, and uh, uh, vasculopathies like diabetic nephropathies, neuropathies, and all. So we asked whether there is there are there are any consequences of this after uh, constitutive necrosis we see in diabetes have any role in uh, in, in the in the in the, um, in, in the stroke and uh, in the atherosclerosis. Yes, we see to understand that to address that question we uh, we thought of using homocysteine. Uh, homocysteine, as Monica uh, had said yesterday, it's an intermediate of uh, maturing uh, pathway. So homocysteine, uh, why we choose an homocysteine is homocysteine has been shown that it induces a reaction of cell species, and homocysteine is also elevated in stroke. So we thought to connect whether homocysteine can be such make next and then see what happens. Homocysteine can, uh, uh, can can be present in four different forms in blood. So one is homocysteine thiolactone, and then homocysteine, and then there is an excess of homocysteine. It uh, makes lysine, it binds to lysine, and then it makes uh, homocysteinated protein. And then later, we will also have autoantibodies to the homocysteine. So, all of these forms are toxic to the cell. So, we tested all of these in, 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 for the neutrophils. And then, see, the first thing is we have, uh, uh, we, we have, we did a time and dose dependent assays to see whether homocysteine can induce nets. Uh, we first showed that, yes, homocysteine can induce nets. They are very uh, potent as other inducers are also. It's not like glucose, it is very highly potent uh, uh, in that inducer. Uh, these are the pharmacopal images to show that uh, it acts, uh, it, it does netosis here. And then netosis, uh, sorry, the homocysteine is highly elevated in our cohort uh, in diabetes, whatever we took. And then these are uh, positively correlated with the uh, elastase and CLC DNA and also with the homocysteine and uh, uh, post prandial uh, glucose levels and then uh, fasting glucose levels. So we we have now we show that there is some association with nets and then uh, homocysteine over there. Now uh, the, the interesting thing what we see is here is uh, you have seen in earlier part that the NPS uh, uh, neutrophils get impeded when there is an NPS. They don't show response. But in uh, in case of homocysteine, it is reverse way round. It accelerates the netosis. So glucose plus NPS, there are more nets. Glucose plus uh, homocysteine, there are more nets uh, than this. 
So uh, this we thought uh, we thought that the signaling pathways are maybe different for both uh, LPS and homocysteine. So now uh, what happens in the case of thrombosis because stroke is from, uh, is associated with thrombosis. So we do we see a bidirectional activation of platelets and the neutrophils in, in this condition. Now what do we see? We have platelets here and then we uh, culture them with the homocysteine in presence of homocysteine plus or minus aspirin. It will either activate, uh, it will inactivate, the uh, aggregation will not happen here. Uh, and then what happens is the condition medium, uh, we check for uh, condition medium, we, uh, we treat with neutrophils and then we see that platelet condition medium which is conditioned with homocysteine can make next over there. Right? And why? Because when platelets are uh, stimulated with homocysteine, they release TNF alpha at a higher pace. Now, uh, on the other way around, if we take the netosis condition medium, the neutrophil condition medium, and then treat with platelets of the same people, we see that there is a platelet aggregation. So, this we, to see whether this platelet aggregation is due to netosis itself, we again treated with DPI, dipyridium and iodinium, which is an NADPH inhibitor, and DNA to dismantle the nets, and then we see the down regulation of platelet aggregation. So, which means the, uh, the activated neutrophils are making uh, nets over there. So to, under, uh, to further understand to see whether uh, uh, homocysteinated proteins can do, there are several homocysteinated proteins reported in the literature. This is the serum protein. We uh, treated all the serum proteins with homocysteine, and then we see that uh, all the proteins, uh, the serum proteins which are homocysteinated, can make very uh, robust netosis here. Uh, then further, we uh, try to uh, try, try to see a few proteins. Uh, we have shown that uh, fibrin and then collagen and then later albumin. Albumin was more potent, so the data is for more albumin here. So, homocysteinated albumin makes <coughs> again more heads in case of uh, uh, in, in, in the neutrophils of the healthy individual. We try to see how much is the uh, healthy, uh, sorry, homocysteinated albumin using mass spectrometry in the patients, in the stroke patients. We see these, these uh, uh, yellow, uh, sorry, the red lines are more of uh, uh, elevated level. Uh, so, we see more uh, uh, more proportions of homocysteinated albumin. Uh, different sites are there. We see some of the sites are very uh, more in case of uh, stroke induced. We also see more auto antibodies here. And then uh, we did a mouse model for homocysteinated uh, hyperhomocysteinemia, giving the uh, uh, methionine rich fat diet, uh, sorry, methionine rich diet. And then we see that uh, there is an uh, endogenous uh, levels of increase in neutrophil elastase in this mouse, and then increased cell free DNA. These mouse have more oxygenation in histones. So, which means that hyperhomocysteinemia mouse have more next component. Then, to uh, understand platelet aggregation, what we did is we did is we induced neutropenia in methionine enriched model by cyclophosphamide, uh, which will bring down the neutrophil level. We see very nicely that uh, when we have neutropenia in a healthy uh, mouse, uh, it doesn't compromise for platelet aggregation. Only when we have hyperhomocysteinemia and the neutropenia, then there is a platelet aggregation is down regulated, which means that. Activation of neutrophils is very important for uh, uh, platelet aggregation in the disease condition, but not in the uh, uh, healthy conditions over there. So now we say that okay, there is an hyperhomocysteinemia, there is a high glucose level over there. Uh, we don't know which comes first, but later we see that there is an aggregation of the platelets, which can be uh, which can be uh, connected to the so the thrombosis related disease. So to understand the um, uh, motor functions are affected in the in the stroke. So we made the stroke models. Uh, this is a milder version of the stroke model. Uh, we see that in this mouse, uh, we see that uh, they are they are very much coping up with this exercise. But in case of hyperhomocysteinemia, who have stroke, they are falling down. But when we have neutropenia here, but they are again coming back. So there is no there are no neutrophils here. There are very reduced amount of neutrophils and activated neutrophils are very less. So they are again coping up with the motor function over there. So uh, we have recruited uh, uh, a good cohort of strokes, around 100 patients, and then we have clinical characterization of these who have hypertension, who have diabetes, who are vegetarians, who are non-vegetarians, who are age, gender, all of it. And then we see that even in the stroke samples, we see there is a high amount of cell free DNA and then neutrophil elastase, which is a component of NETS, and then more of homocysteine. We see more relevance with the hypertension rather than diabetes in this case, the correlations are more uh, with the homocysteine elastase and sulfidine, with more uh, hypertension patients, but we also see month, month, uh, some of the uh, things with uh, uh, diabetes. Also. So <coughs> here is the uh, 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 schematic to show that uh, homocysteine can, hyperhomocysteinemia can be caused by many of these, and then uh, we see that homocysteine and along with homocysteinated proteins can do a bidirectional activation of these neutrophils and platelets, and then uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, 
important in the pro uh, people. Now, as we see, there are many ways we can uh, make nets. But what we see here is uh, all of the end users can make different shapes, different patterns. Uh, probably this leads us to think that uh, there is differences in the signaling patterns what we have here. So hence, we cover, we carried out uh, orthotrophic analysis in the neutrophils, uh, which are uh, treated with the uh, high glucose, LPS, and NCY, and then we see that. Uh, their um, uh, the stimulation for stimulation zone is more different, and then as we see here, the network analysis also show. Professor, do you only three minutes? So uh, we, we see that uh, the network analysis, pathway adjustment analysis, also see uh, we see differences uh, in the signatures, pathway proteomics signatures over here. Now, uh, as we go more depth, deeper into the pathway proteomics data, we see more uh, distinct proteins are there which are uh, activated by diverse inducers. Now. Uh, 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 yeah, so we, we did, uh, we also did the up, upstream kinase analysis in NBCR and then we see the patterns are different. So, which means that the kinases which are upstream of all of these uh, stimulations are different. So, they all induce LEDs in different ways. That, that is what is the take home message over here. So, further we uh, attributed all of these fossil signatures uh, in the functions of the neutrophils, that is respiratory reverse, chemotaxis, phagocytosis. In all of this, they show uh, commonality and also differences. What we are looking is more into differences. To tailor the more of neutrophil mediated uh, therapies over here. So, with this quote of uh, uh, the Nobel laureate in physiology, I would end up my talk. The observations what we made is neutrophils are constitutively activated in uh, diabetes, hyperglycemia impedes uh, neutrophil response, whereas homocysteine accelerates the threat, and then next leads to recurrent infection and thrombosis, and then they are distinctly different. Now, our, take, our, our further studies, what we think is neutrophils are highly heterogeneous in nature. So, pan anti neutrophil therapies in disease may not be effective. So, identifying disease specific targets is important. And then, for example, in case of diabetes, we have to reduce high glucose induced legs and then we have to activate simultaneously to the infection so that high, high uh, diabetic people can uh, cope up with the infection over there. So, probably we are also looking at calorie restriction models to see whether uh, neutrophil functions can be also be uh, can, can, can also be improved over there. So, finally, I thank, uh, thank our team. Uh, uh, Dr. Satish Rao is our director, Dr. Satyamurthy is our uh, earlier director and all he was helping a lot, lot of, our, uh, uh, of, of uh, our studies. Uh, Dr. Guru Prasad is, uh, uh, is, is the HOD and then all of our doctors who are there who helps us with medicine and the neurologist and then uh, Dr. Chami Shastri is a hematologist and uh, we are funded by uh, all the agencies, government agencies. Thank, thank you all and then this is a beautiful river in Manipal. Uh, which we call the Suvarna River. It's a uh, start of Western Ghats. So I all I, I invite you all for this place and then uh, for the for having. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And this is a very nice, very nice uh, presentation. And my intuition is there will be more questions, right? So uh, please, uh, the thing is this: we are going to have only two questions because because of the time. You can understand that the next the next speaker is waiting on. Uh, with, with uh, keeping uh, the finger crossed. So only one question. So there are intuitions because it's a very, very good uh, speaking all. So I think there's only two questions will be taken at this moment. Yeah, Manjana, yeah. one, wonderful work and very uh, illustrious activities that you're doing there. Uh, one particular query that because it looks to be more of a that you can uh, supplement vitamin uh, B, B6, B9, B12, yeah. and even vitamin C. And you can take care of the nervous completely, right? Uh, so, if you listen to do vitamin therapy, I'm sure that this process can be taken care of. Yes, sir. Uh, while, while collected these samples, we did not thought of, so we just isolated metabolites and all of this. So, that's a good idea. We, we are looking at it, uh, whether we can. Uh, the idea is that whether it's due to the vitamin deficiency. But on the other hand, what we see is uh, in the diet patterns we have analyzed, the diet, uh, western, uh, sorry, the vegetarian, non vegetarian thing. So it, it is happening more in non-vegetarian people. So unlikely, I don't know whether vitamin B12 with until unless it is absorption problem uh, may not be, but we will look into it. Probably at least in mouse models. Yeah, but you know, very nice talk uh, as of present thing to you. Uh, one question: Have you seen the pattern of uh, neutrophils in uh, like Moody or uh, that and and? Uh, the neutrophils uh, which you are talking about, um, as you said, it's like kind of uh, immediately there is an activation. So this stays for, you know, diabetes is lifelong disease. So do you see this 
uh, in a longitudinal way that that new professors are like kind of you know uh, uh, spelling out the nets. So what has been reported is that uh, if we have uh, there was a longitudinal study, so to give uh, metformin for the three months and then we can uh, after three months and again after six months. So uh, the inflammatory markers came down, but the next level did not come down. So it took six months to come down. Although glycated hemoglobin levels also came down after three months, but six months it, it came down uh, minimally to the level. So it is uh, it is not directly associated, probably only with the glucose. There are many things which is happening. Waiting there, I feel so that we will give a chance. No, no, it's all right because we are running out of time. You can understand the next session will be coming and then the lunch and other. So I feel that uh, 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 jo Josie, uh, Josie, sir, will be available to us in, in any kind of questions in the, in the hours of the lunch and the coffee break. So thank you so much uh, for a nice talk inside us about the extra stimulus traps and all. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for the very informative talk. And also, I would request Professor Bandhopadhyay to please present token to uh, Dr. Josh, uh, Professor Joshi. And I request you here to accompany him, sir. So, uh, the last speaker and last, last but not least, a young generation that will be talking about.